Right now live on WHAS 11 News at 5 o'clock. The rain comes down heavy today, then takes a break again. We're in one of those break moments, but Kentuckiana spring so far has never looked so green and bright. Your yard is soaking it in and growing by leaps and bounds as we speak. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us at 5. I'm Doug Profit. And I'm Shay McAllister. Meteorologist Sam Gabrielli is here at 5 to update the timing of the return of the rain tonight and how long it'll last. Doug Sam? and Shay, it has been a rainy week so far, and I promise you by the weekend that rain is going to be long gone out of our forecast. We just have basically the next 18 hours, I would say, of just dealing with some sporadic light rain showers here and there. It's going to be a gloomy next couple of uh, about a day to a, about a day and a half here uh, before we do talk about a lot of sun into the weekend. Live look at radar and uh, we're not super concerned about some of these storms popping up east of Louisville, but I'm going to bring it towards Shelbyville where we do have a couple of storms that are popping up right now. Uh, there's nothing severe, but uh, there might be a brief lightning strike with these as they do trek their way off to the east. Springfield towards Lebanon, even Danville picking up some of these showers and uh, brief rumbles of thunder. So again, towards Shelbyville, this is where we are watching right now. The storm did pop up uh, right over the city limits. A brief thunderstorm over I-64. So some brief heavy rain off to the east and notice the cold front is uh, actually inching in from the west. So with that, we're noticing more of a light rain event for I-64 and much of the Levin Leavenworth area and towards Cordon here pretty soon. Uh, you can see where the active severe weather is underway across the Appalachian Valley here across much of the eastern Kentucky area and West Virginia. So we're seeing the cooler air punch in behind all these showers throughout the course of the week. We're sitting at 58 in the city. Notice that wind out of the west and northwest. It's going to be a windy day tomorrow. Uh, wind gusts tomorrow could be getting up to 30 to 35 out of the west and northwest. Now notice too the cooler air in the 50s across central and much of northern Indiana. A lot of us to the east are still in the 60s. So we are tracking some additional showers into this evening. Doug and Shay, I'm going to update everybody much more on uh, well, it's either going to be me or Alden in about 10 more minutes on uh, what we can expect as we get into the weekend with that sunshine and warmer air. Stick around for that. Okay, thank you very much, Sam. Now to our top story, the historic vote by the Jefferson County School Board drastically changing bus transportation, which has been guaranteed to students for decades. Tonight, we're detailing what it means for the magnet and traditional students. It came down to a narrow vote in Wednesday night's special school board meeting, and it was a contentious decision between the board and the community. I hate I hated making this and any part of this decision. It just it absolutely crushed me. I mean, this was by far the hardest of my seven years. JCPS says it evaluated 16 different transportation plans, but ultimately landed on the one that would cut transportation to all magnet and traditional schools in the district, except high schools, where 65%, 75% or more of the students qualify for free and reduced lunches. Right now, for the next year, that includes central and western high schools. Ian Hardwood spoke with a board member who hopes the change leads to a return of full service in the future. Everything depends on transportation. That's why JCPS board member Linda Duncan wanted to vote on next year's plan soon. It's important so families can decide where to send their kids, so schools hey, can figure out their here. staffing based on those students, and so the transportation team can finalize routes. As that vote neared, a crowd pleaded the board to halt, including Councilwoman Donna Purvis. And I don't think it's right. you won't get a board member Chris Cole resisted criticism that the decision came too quickly. Anybody who thinks this vote has been rushed simply has not been paying attention for the last nine months. In a four to three vote, the board approved transportation to traditional and magnet high schools where 75% of students enroll in the free and reduced lunch program. That means central and western high schools will continue getting bus service next school year. Joe Marshall, a board member who called for the special meeting but voted against the plan, told WHAS through a statement, last night's vote by a majority of my colleagues is disappointing. It importantly underlines an increased need for a governance model that allows for increased transparency and community collaboration. JCPS Transportation's own presentation admits the plan still means routes will run late, ending around 6.20 p.m. Currently, they run till 7 p.m. on average. Board member Duncan believes the improvement will draw bus drivers back to the district. She says almost 100 drivers left due to long and complicated routes. And I think a, a simplified plan will be more appealing, and I do hope that as we draw them back, we can add routes and, 
and hopefully someday be able to get back to what we were doing. Though she admits it was a difficult decision. Nobody is choosing this saying this is the best thing. We know it's not the best, but it's the best that we can come up with with 474 drivers. In Louisville, Ian Hardwit, WHAS 11, on your side. Linda Duncan right there also told us the approved plan includes changes recommended by the independent prismatic audit of the transportation system, like keeping routes regional instead of stretching across Jefferson County. Well, the plan isn't sitting well with some in the community, including former educators, one telling us she predicts legal challenges to the board's vote. It comes as a racial equity analysis obtained by WHAS 11 News says cutting magnet bus service will widen economic gaps. Senior reporter Isaiah Kim Martinez is here now to break down those concerns. Isaiah, we know transparency is really at the heart of this issue. Well, Shay, Doug, absolutely. And as you guys mentioned, it really did not sit well with certain folks, including some former educators, including one former JCPS principal, that last night's meeting was called just the day before and days ahead of when the board was supposed to revisit this bus transportation plan. She called the decision both illegal and immoral. The eyes have it. This is going to be in a courthouse sooner than later. I don't think that families in our community are going to stand for students at one particular school being favored over students at another. The pushback from the public didn't come without warning. It needs to be changed. It is the option. It is the right. A racial equity analysis completed by members of the community late last year saying a cut to magnet transportation will, quote, create more academic gaps. Dr. Michelle Patrick with the Louisville branch NAACP is on that committee. Why did you provide the community with choice and then you're going to take it away? Instead, the JCPS Board of Ed voted to cut bus service for the majority of magnet and traditional school students, saying the bus driver shortage has forced their hand. And continuing to go back and go back until we can find something that makes everybody happy. I wish we could. I hate this vote. I do not want the kids at any of our schools to suffer, but we are making them suffer today if we don't do something about it. Meanwhile, former JCPS principal Michelle Penix worries how neighborhood schools will handle an expected influx of kids unable to travel farther for their choice school. When you think about more students being able to stay in their resides, which means right around the California community, where are those students going to go? We don't know and we haven't heard that. But the district maintains that cutting down on the countless instructional minutes lost to late buses is the priority and the most equitable path forward. The approved transportation plan also cuts down the current number of school start times from 9 to 3. They would be 7.30 a.m., 8.40 a.m., and 9.40 a.m. Of course, that would be for next school year. Shay. All right, Isaiah, thank you. JCPS leaders say the transportation issues really boil down to major bus driver shortages. If they had enough drivers, these decisions wouldn't have to be made. So to help address the driver shortage, JCPS continues holding dr bus driver blitz hiring events. The next one is this Saturday, April 13th from 9 until 2 at the Hilton Garden Inn on Crittenden Drive. And now to a traffic update. The Second Street Bridge will be under a temporary closure tomorrow before fully reopening both sides for the evening commute. Tomorrow afternoon from 2.30 until 5, the bridge will close so crews can remove traffic measures and also restripe the road. You might remember the original reason for the bridge closure was that big crash when a semi was sent over the edge of the bridge, damaging some of the concrete. Officials say the repair project is on track to be finished nearly a week ahead of schedule. That'll help avoid any disruptions to the city's preparations for thunder over Louisville. Also here tonight at 5, the man at the center in the investigation the night Brianna Taylor was killed by Metro Police will be behind bars longer than originally sentenced. Jamarcus Glover appearing in court in a hearing that ended up giving him more time in prison now. Glover was on probation until he was recently arrested for several drug-related charges. Last month, the judge sentenced Glover to seven years in prison for charges that date back to July of 2020. A judge added a year to his sentence for violating his parole. Glover is still facing more drug-related charges. He's expected to be back in court coming up in May. Also happening today, O.J. Simpson has died, according to his family. The family saying the former football great, who was accused and acquitted of the murder of his ex-wife and her friend, 
died, of, uh, lost his battle with cancer just yesterday. They say he was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. He was 76 years old. ABC's Rena Roy has more on his life. On a third down and 21. In the late 60s and 70s, he was considered one of the greatest athletes in the country. O.J. Simpson, the Juice, an All-American at USC and the Heisman Trophy winner in 1968. Simpson went to the Buffalo Bills, turning a bad team into a good one and himself into a legend. The first player ever to gain 2,000 yards in a single NFL season, a Hall of Famer. I'll never let you guys down, man. I'll, I'll live up to the honor of being in this hall and being on your team. With athletic ability and star quality, he became one of the first black athletes to win off the field in the lucrative endorsement game. He starred in commercials on TV and in movies, yeah, from Dakota, creating a celebrity lifestyle. But that changed in June 1994 when Simpson's ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, was found brutally murdered. She'd been stabbed repeatedly and her throat was slit. Her friend, Ronald Goldman, was also repeatedly stabbed to death. Simpson quickly became a suspect, and after the now infamous white Bronco slow speed chase, which was carried live on TV stations around the country, he was arrested. Charged with both murders, Simpson's nine month murder trial was broadcast to millions. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. Two years later, sued in civil court by the parents of Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman, the verdict went the other way. Simpson was found liable for the deaths. His assets were seized and he was ordered to pay $33.5 million in restitution to both victims' families. He never paid a dollar and virtually bankrupt, Simpson's life became a decade-long encounter with the paparazzi. In 2007, Simpson was arrested after he and friends entered a Las Vegas hotel room to retrieve sports memorabilia Simpson claimed had been stolen from him. The jury disagreed. Guilty. Simpson was sentenced to 33 years in prison, but was released on parole after nine years. Out of the spotlight, the all-American hero and American pariah died as a disgraced but free man. Rena Roy, ABC News. The polarizing figure did visit Louisville a few times, even attending the Kentucky Derby. We went back to the WHS 11 archives today to look at our video, and we talked with him during his three different visits to the Kentucky Derby. Pleasure to be in Kentucky, you know. You've been here several times. Well, I'm here every year. I look forward to it. As much as I look forward to the Super Bowl, I look forward to the Derby. Well, that was in 2007 when our crews caught up with him as he was entering Churchill Downs. The night before, he had been kicked out of Louisville's Jeff Ruby Steakhouse in downtown Louisville by the owner himself, Jeff Ruby. We'll have more at 6 on why that happened. Simpson was acquitted in 1995 of the double murder of his wife and her friend.